My name is Jeff Melanson. I'm an assistant professor of history here at IPFW. My research is interested in how the principles of the Founding Fathers, and especially George Washington, were used and understood, and in some cases misunderstood, by Americans throughout the 19th century. My first book, uh, Addressing America, George Washington's Farewell in the Making of National Culture, Policy, and Diplomacy, um, 1796 to 1852, is interested in how George Washington's Presidential Farewell Address, which was written in 1796 as he was retiring from uh, two terms in office after eight years in office, how that was used throughout the 19th century, and especially in the first half of the 19th century, to um, influence United States foreign policy. Um, the fair, I should say a little bit about the farewell address to kind of help demonstrate the importance that the document had. Um, Washington had been president for eight years. He was ready to retire, and he decided in the summer of 1796 that he wanted to get his closest confidant, Alexander Hamilton, to help him write a, a valedictory uh, message, or the, what became known as the farewell address, directly to the American people. This would be the first time that the president had spoken directly to the American people. Although I should clarify that even though it's called an address, it was written with newspaper publication in mind. It was never delivered orally by Washington, although it's been um, delivered that way by thousands of speakers in the, in the 200 years since its publication. But, um, so Washington sat down and, and with ha Hamilton's help he wrote this message that explained the reasons why he was retiring and it gave a couple of general warnings to the American people about the dangers of political parties but then also about the need to recognize America's true interests in foreign policy. Uh, the United States in 1796 was a young nation, it was a weak nation, we had no navy and we had a very small army. Um, and we were trying to grow and prosper, but we were doing that in a world of hostile, strong, powerful European empires and countries um, who cared very little about us, our rights, or our interests. And so Washington's main point was, we need to be very careful in understanding our interests. We want to expand commercially, but we want to keep as far removed from European politics and military issues as we possibly can. Because if we get involved in those things, it, it can't bring about any good outcomes for the United States. And our interests aren't tied up in those things anyways. Our interests should be kept at home in our own growth. Um, but the key for Washington's farewell address for foreign policy was that he said that um, if we're able to stay at home, if we're able to prosper and focus on ourselves for long enough, eventually we will grow, eventually we'll become stronger, and eventually, eventually we'll be able to dictate to the European powers how they should treat us. We'll have the military might, we'll have the economic might um, that will force them to respect us and treat us differently. And by that point in time, our interests will be very different. And so we'll be pursuing different foreign policies. Um, so Washington says all this in the summer of 1796. P the American people um, are sad to see Washington go, but they take his, his advice very seriously. His, the next president, John Adams, kind of devotes himself to following Washington's advice. And then in 1801, Thomas Jefferson is inaugurated as president. And in his inaugural address, Jefferson says, uh, he, he talks about the principles that will guide his administration, and one of those is principles is uh, that he'll pursue peace, commerce, and honest friendship with all nations, entangling alliances with none. Um, and the American people see this. Washington's birthday was just a couple weeks before that. He died just the year before that. And so uh, Washington's warnings were well on Americans' minds. And when they heard uh, Jefferson say, peace, commerce, and honest friendship with all nations, entangling alliances with none, the thought that clicked in their heads was, oh, well, Jefferson is devoting himself to Washington and his principles. The problem is that where Washington said, here's what we should do now, but eventually things will change, peace, commerce, and honest friendship with all nations, entangling alliances with none, is a pretty defined set of principles and policies. Um, we're going we're gonna to pursue peace, commerce, and honest friendship, and then otherwise we're not really going to interact with anyone. This was kind of an all or nothing proposition. And really the important word here isn't alliances and it isn't none, it's actually entangling. Americans were really concerned about any foreign entanglements. And so what happens is that in the years after Jefferson's inaugural address, within a decade after Jefferson d delivers this message, the American people start associating the phrase entangling alliances with none directly with the farewell address. And they're quoting it as if Washington had said this, this was Washington's advice, this was Washington's principle. And it creates a tension in American foreign policy between um, recognizing changing interests and recognizing that maybe we should have a closer relationship with Spanish America when it gains its independence or, or saying, um, nope, nothing, entangling alliances with none, we can't change our policy, our policy is permanent. And so for the next 50 years, the, the overarching narrative of American foreign policy, and this is what I explore in the book in some detail, is this tension between these two viewpoints. Um, and it's, it's, it's important because it demonstrates how important Washington's farewell address actually is. It's a largely forgotten document today in terms of this foreign policy is issue. 
Um, but it also just it, it puts a different spin on the history of American foreign relations. Uh, historians have a tendency to segment things much more closely around wars and presidential administrations. But by looking at foreign policy through the lens of the farewell address, you actually see this 50-year story of Americans struggling with their, to understand their place in the world and their appropriate responses to global affairs. Um, so that's the, that's the main project I've undertaken at this point, to look at um, to look at how the principles of the founders were used. I've also um, done some work on the uh, uh, debates in the 19th century about the authorship of the farewell address. There were some political debates and some family disputes over um, who played what role and whether or not Hamilton actually just wrote the whole thing himself and the efforts of Washington's family and the Federalist Party to kind of keep those secret. Uh, and I also have explored in an, in an article that's being published in um, in August of 2015, uh, how the founders and their legacies were used to shape Abraham Lincoln's reelection campaign. Um, that in 1864, in the midst of the Civil War, both both the Republicans and the Democrats are using George Washington and Thomas Jefferson and the founders to kind of shape the way the American people understand this election. So it's a really interesting, um, a really interesting example of the ongoing influence of the founders in a way we don't fully appreciate today.